Welcome to Shamba Chef of Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. To make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmer's experience on the Shamba Shape Up Uganda! Uganda. Where are we headed off today? Well, we've had an interesting request. Ooh, tell me, tell me, tell me. Yes, it's from a man who has been working both as a teacher and also as a part-time farmer. But he says as soon as he retires, he wants to get into farming full-time. Oh, so he wants us to teach him a few things. Maybe a few new tricks? Mm, wait, we'll see if you can help him. But wait, Frob. No tricks, no jokes. Serious knowledge, man. I can be serious, Agi. <clears throat> uh, what do you call a sleeping bull? A sleeping bull? Mm. I don't know. What do you call a sleeping bull? A bulldozer. <laughs> <laughs> like Frob. Do you see what I have to put up with every day? But it is what it is. He's my person and I love him. Today we are in Wakiso district close to the busy streets of Kampala. And we're visiting teacher and farmer James Serusa. James has five children. Moses is the eldest and is also keen to help out on the farm. All together, they have seven acres. Their main business is cows. But they also have some chickens, bananas and maize, which they grow as a fodder crop. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Hello. Mr. James? Yes, I'm ah, done. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Yes, I'm called James. My name is Agnes Kevin. You're welcome. Uh, from Ishalwanga, from Shamba Shepap. Oh. James, yes, what challenges do you have on your farm? Low milk production. Okay. Because out of the four animals that, that we are milking now, uh, we get around 30 liters per day. Mm. Then two, on the side, side of, of banana, mm. Mm. we have the challenge of, of weevils. Then also we try to go into poultry, mm. Mm. but still we have challenges of diseases. Our birds died, many of them. And also low experience because we are, we are new entrants into this field. Mm. Yes. Agi, you know, sometimes I also feel like a chicken. What do you mean? Ever since I came out of my shell. <laughs> Sorry, like, um, but so seriously, uh, let us go and get the experts, then we come back, okay? okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, we'll see you. This is weird. Weird, right. Quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time to get serious. Our first job today is to help James increase the milk production. But however good the quality of the feed or supplements we give a cow, once the breed's maximum potential is reached, it will never give more than that. So many farmers use artificial insemination to breed cows with a higher potential milk yield. Using AI or artificial insemination is a great way to improve the breed of your cow. But if it doesn't work, then it's a waste of money. So how can you tell for sure when the cow is on heat? Let's find out. Mm -hmm. Knowing if your cow is on heat is vital to achieving a successful insemination. Ah, James, there you are. Now I'm going to take James to meet Dr. Timothy Kasule from Naro. He's an expert on cow breeding, and I'm sure if anyone can explain how to breed high-yielding dairy cows using AI and avoid wasting money on failed inseminations, it will be Timothy. Dr. Timothy, yes. hello, how are you? I'm okay. Good, good. Uh -huh. So, how much milk are you getting? Right now, we get around, around 30 liters a day. I have about four cows that, that are milking. Oh, Dr. Yes. Timothy, mm. is that a good range? Uh, it's a bit on the lower side. It's a bit on the lower side. Uh, yes, uh, 30 liters, that mm. is supposed to be produced by one animal. How can we help him? We have to look for breeds that will give him the amount of milk he, he wants. By yes. using... Artificial insemination. Yes, it is possible by using artificial insemination. Okay. Uh, the breeds can be gotten uh, looking through catalogs. We have various catalogs. Uh, for example, this bull is called uh, Blowtorch. Uh, here, it tells us how much milk. Uh -huh. So Blow it will torch. give him 
1,183 liters of milk in a period of around seven months. So comparing that to his four cows, yes. how much is that a day? Uh, this is uh, 1,183 mm -hmm. divided by around 200. Why 200? Uh, 200 is the period during which the animal will be milked. Oh. Okay. Uh, yes. 200 so, days. 200 days. days. Oh. So mm -hmm. that means that with his current production, we shall get an addition of Ooh. five liters of milk per day. Okay. So if your animal is giving you seven liters, yes. and then we cross it with this bull, yes. the female we shall get out of it mm -hmm. will give you around 12 liters. But sometimes AI can fail. What can farmers do? This is a problem James has been experiencing. Now it is not even easy for me to detect when the animals are on heat. The main issue with artificial insemination is timing. So he should be able to identify the signs of heat. Mm -hmm. You will see the animal bellowing, yes. uh, you will see it mounting others, yes. uh, it fails to eat. To eat? That okay. is the beginning. Oh. And then when it is ready, what we call standing heat. Okay. Instead of mounting others, it is the one now that wants to be mounted. Oh. And when others mount it, it doesn't move away. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. yes. Okay. And then after identifying, uh -huh. on the first site, you should call the technician. Oh. And then in artificial insemination, we use the AM to PM rule. For example, if we see the animal in heat mm. at 8 AM, uh -huh. we inseminate at 8 PM. Why is that so? That is so because these signs, 12 hours later, is when that animal will release the egg. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. The semen is kept in very cold conditions. It is in this tank, a liquid nitrogen tank. That is now liquid nitrogen turning back into air. Mm -hmm. And the semen is stored in chambers that look like these ones. And different chambers have different semen according to what we have in the catalog here. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Dr. Timothy, Yes. is there a way you could show us how all this operates? Uh, sure, sure. I'll be <laughs> now able to put on my glove. So now for our final task today, Dr. Timothy is going to demonstrate how the vet does the insemination. The semen is placed in a rod like this for insertion into the cow's uterus. In some cases, the vet can use ultrasound to check the cow to make sure there are no problems. After four or five generations, the maximum milk yield for the breed will be reached. But remember, feeding and general management is also very important to getting more milk. Thank you, Dr. Timothy. Remember, farmers, choose AI for better cow productivity and monitor your cows closely for signs of heat. Everyone loves beans, right? They are tasty, high in nutrients, and good for the soil. So, how about a bean that's even better than that? Let's find out. Naro has been helping develop a range of improved, high-yielding, biofortified beans, which are also better adapted to climate change. That sounds amazing. So we've invited Will Basekandi from National Agriculture Research Organization to tell us all about them. Uh, so, James, yes, do you grow beans on your farm? Yes, but on a smaller scale for, mm. for home consumption. Ah, so that's why we have Wilbur here because he's an expert yes. and he's into beans. Yes. Uh, Wilbur, okay. do, do we have any improved varieties on the market? For us as Naro, we have over 32 bean varieties that we have released mm. of different classes. We have started producing beans which have high nutritional content, mm. higher mm. than the, 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 the beans we previously had. Mm. And the beans we are promoting are the bio-fortified beans. They have high amounts of iron and zinc in them. Uh, we all know that iron is very good in the uh, production of blood, therefore mm. Uh, mm. for fighting anemia and other uh, health challenges. Mm. What is very special about these beans, they are also high-yielding beans. They are more drought tolerant mm. uh, compared to the previous ones. Mm. And we think everybody who has where to grow beans should go for such beans because of uh, uh, the advantages they have over the, the previous ones. Mm. Yeah. James, yes, please. so what do you think about this whole information? Do you think we can have a place where we can at least have a demo? Yes, we can have some piece of Oh, Let's go prepared. look at it and then you can decide yes. if it's suitable. Yes. Okay. Okay. That is, uh... Wow! 
These beans sound great. And better still, they are available in our favorite common bean varieties such as masavu or sugar bean type, the nambali bean, and the kanyewa bean. Uh, Wilbur, this uh -huh. is what we have. Is this good enough? I think it's good. What's the first thing that we do after we've gotten to this stage? Yeah, so we are going to be marking our gardens because you first mark. Which type of bean are we planting? We are going to plant the nambali type and specifically we are going to plant narrow bean too. So it has a high nutritional value, it is high yielding, in any acre you can get up to 800 kilograms, then it is tolerant to, to pests and diseases. And then let's go into it. Uh, Karis, please come and help. Uh, okay, yeah, so we are going to, to mark yes. from one line to another, it has to be one and a half feet. Planting depth is between three and five centimeters. Then after that, you use a string and mark and make the lines or okay. the, the furrows uh, where you are going to be dropping the seed. When you plant beans in, in a line, there are many advantages. First and foremost, uh, field operations will be easy. Weeding, spraying, mm. other advantages, you will have the most appropriate plant population in any given area. So next thing. So the next thing is we will be cutting the, the lines, yes. The next step is now planting, okay? So we are going to drop beans along these lines now. We drop them 10 centimeters apart and we drop one bean per hole. We have finished dropping the seed. So the next thing will be now to cover with soil, okay? Okay. We cover with a small layer of soil eh? yeah, for easy, easy germination. Eh? Okay. Okay. So uh, what is the key here is that you don't allow your beans to have weeds, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so about two, two three weeks from now, when the weeds are, are come, you, you weed, okay? So remember farmers, don't plant any old beans. Look for the narrow, improved, biofortified beans. They are good for your health, they have higher yield, and they are resistant to drought. But best of all, they are tasty. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, ha, ha. Hey, Frob. Yes. I'm really loving this idea of planting beans. Mm. How did you get on with the cows? Uh, you know, I found out why cows have hooves and not feet. Uh, really? Mm. Wait, why do cows have hooves and not feet? Because they are lactose. <laughs> <laughs> lactose, you uh, get it? <laughs> please ignore his terrible jokes. Oh, Still to come, after the break, we find out how to keep chickens and managing bananas for a bigger crop. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. We're in Wakiso District. And we are visiting James Serusa. Stay with us to find out about keeping chickens and managing pests in bananas. Uh, 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 again, yes, we don't have time. Okay. okay so I'll see you later. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Keeping chicken can be a very profitable business. But how do you choose between broilers and layers? How about a chicken that is hardy, resistant to disease, lays eggs, and mm, makes a tasty meal? Mm. Well, can chick have a breed that has all that and more? The Kenbra. It could be the answer for James. He's been keeping layers because he likes the eggs. But his last batch had problems. So Brian Chagulani from Kenchik has come to tell us all about keeping Kenbra chicks. Ah, good, and here he is. Mr. James, how are you doing? I'm doing Pleasure fine. to meet you, sir. Yeah, this is a good farm. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, yes, my brother. <laughs> how are you? Good, good. Yeah. What, well, Mr. James? What were the challenges you faced with your poultry? Several of them. Mm -hmm. We had ch ch the challenge of, 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 of market. Then we had ch ch the challenge of, of, of resources, inputs. Inputs, yes. yes. Inputs. Yes. Then we also had the challenge of diseases. Because oh. several of them died when, when they were still young. 
because, because of, uh, 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 this is that attacked them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Brian, why would Kenbro work for Mr. James? The Kenbro is a very versatile breed. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, in appearance, it looks like the local breed, mm -hmm. but yes. then its performance is very good. Uh, it is highly resistant to disease. Good. And then it's able to have a high feed conversion. Mm -hmm. Even when you feed with uh, the inputs that are available to the farmer, it's able to convert it to meat in a very short time. Wow. You're looking at about 10 to 12 weeks. That is three months okay. for the cocks to mm -hmm. be ready in the market. Okay. And then the most important thing is that the females can actually be kept for eggs. Oh. So you can have the eggs going into the market and then the males are sold for meat. So you're beating two birds with just one stone. Wonderful. And that's why the Kenbro is a very magical bird. Uh, Mr. James, yes, please. does the Kenbro breed sound appetizing to you? Yes, because of the resistance I've had mm -hmm. and because of its ability to convert all these other foods that, that we have locally, yes. it seems like, like it is easier to maintain it. So I think it would be a good, a good idea if, if, if I tried the, the Kenbro. Uh -huh. Mr. Brand, is there something we can do for Mr. James? Yeah, true, we can. Mm -hmm. uh, we can check out his house first. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then we see. Wonderful. Then good, then, good. Yeah. Lead, lead, lead the way. Yes. Lead the way, please. Right, now let's have a look. This is James's brooding area for the chicks. The place is fairly good. If you look at the floor, it's clean, it's well uh, cemented. However, I think there are a couple of things we can do okay. to make it more suitable for yes. our babies mm -hmm. before yes. they come. Yes. And uh, for starters, we may have to remove all this, uh, dust up a bit on mm -hmm. the walls. Mm -hmm. And then most importantly, we'll have to put uh, something to improve on the heat uh, maintenance in the brooding point. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Make so, ready. and then we'll also make sure we remove the corners because chicks always want to hide in the corners. And oh, once they hide okay. there, okay. they die. So we'll make sure we do a rounded brooding unit mm -hmm. using some plywood. Okay. And then that will be very suitable. Mr. James. Yes, please. Would you like us to shape this place up so that when we bring the Kenbu chicks, Huh? They, are, they find the place clean and everything. You're, you're most welcome. Uh, thank I like you. it, yes. Uh, meanwhile, you can go and join Aggie. She's waiting for you. Yes. Then uh, we'll see you later. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Thank you. Karis! Yes. I have a magician. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good. Here is Karis. Now while Aggie helps James with his banana plantation, we can get to work on preparing the brooding area. The walls and floor must be clean. We need disinfected foot baths to stop diseases spreading. And here is the plywood for constructing the circular broader pen. We will use this pot as a heat generator. Keeping the chicks warm is very important. And clean up this lamp so we can have light 24 hours a day. We also spread wood shavings on the floor and keep the pen dry. Great! We'll soon be done. While you work on the chicken pen, I'm going to take James to meet our banana expert, Dr. Godfrey Seru. James's banana crop is not so good, and he wants to find out why. Doctor, what do you think? I have seen some banana weevils. Can we look at the weevils yes, and see yes, how best yes. we can help him? Yeah. Yeah. Weevils can be a serious pest. In just three years, they can wipe out an entire banana plantation if control measures are not taken. Now, you can easily see these pseudostems here already eaten up. Now like this, the damage shows that it, the infestation is high. These are tunnels created mm. by the weevil. The good thing there, some control measures that you can put in place. Okay to reverse this. It's good we have you here, so mm. let's talk about the control measures. The first thing mm. is uh, to use the culture control. Okay. But when Mr. Serusa harvests, he traps. How do we do the trapping? Once you harvest, you get part of the pseudostem, cut it, then cover with the pseudostem. After two days or so, the weavers tend to come on top. Now you get this, and put it in an insect side, or you can just it's kill it. So that is one of the methods. And if you've not trapped, then you have to use some chemicals. Um. Uh, among the chemicals we use is Dudugard. It uh, helps you in two ways, to kill the weevil, and at the same time, the nematodes. Yes. Nematodes are those very tiny worms. Yeah? worms. Now, 
With Dudugan, you have to mix 200 ml in 20 liters. You come and apply. Make sure it goes down slowly so that way it will kill whatever is here and even go into the ground. Then the other method, which can be easier for you, is feeding the plant. You have a lot of manure. So once you give it enough manure, the effect of the weevil will be very low because the plant will be growing vigorously. So the effect of the weevil will not be as severe as, as this. Let's go then and see how we can apply it and show Mr. James how to do it. Okay. Yes, please. James has plenty of manure from his cows, but he's not been applying it the right way. So it's been wasted. If done well, he will get more bananas and fight off the weevils. Uh, so, Mr. Selsa, yes, when we are applying manure, you don't put it just next to the plant. You put it some distance away, a minimum mm. of one foot. Yes. Because once you put it very close here, the comb tends to grow upwards and later on it gets exposed and the plant can easily be lodged by wind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now, we shall apply our manure in a ring around the plant. Now, a plant like this needs about a benzene of manure. That is about 10 to 12 kilograms. After about six months, you can apply more. So now, we prefer a forty hole because it causes minimum damage to the roots of the banana plant. It shouldn't be very deep, about 10 centimeters or less. Mm. What next? We have to get the manure. Yeah, we apply about 10 kilograms mm. of manure, well decomposed manure. So after applying, mm. we don't just leave it on the surface, but now we cover. So we cover the manure to prevent it from being lost to the atmosphere when it shines. So, yeah. this way, mm. your plant is good to go. Thank you very much, Doctor, for the information. I hope if we apply this, it's going to help us produce my, my yield. Welcome. And uh, we beg to leave you because now, yeah. James, we have to go check on the chicken house. Oh, yes, yes. It must be almost done. Yes. Let's we'll see you later, taking. Doctor. Okay, please. Mm. Let me organize this. Okay. We have the, the, the garden, we have the manure. But now what, what was letting us down is, is application. But now that we got the, the, the knowledge, then I think I think we are going to fly. James, yes. welcome to our new and improved brood. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, please. That's Can I see, we first disinfect yes. then? Yes, and then, then we proceed we... with the brooder. Yes. And look. Uh, oh, yes, Ali, yes, you're here. Yes. Aha, yes. uh -huh. welcome, Mr. James. Welcome, welcome. Thank, thank welcome. you, thank you, thank you. Yes, as you can see, our brooder pen is ready. The water drinker, the pot for the warmth, the light. Uh, even our black cafeira is already set up. Okay. Uh, you you know, outdid this yourself this time. This is nothing new. <laughs> 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 so you can see the black cavera is yes. going to be used as a curtain. Yes. Okay. Yes, to keep the warmth. So, okay. In our pen. Okay. What do you think? It's very, very good. It's a nice place for the young ones now. Uh, yes. yes. But they are not yet here. They are coming soon. Oh, all oh, right on the time. Mr. Brand. All oh, right. Good, good, good. Okay. Hey, welcome. Oh, they are here. Yes. Finally. Hey. Oh, we can then put them in. Okay. Hey, look at Agi. So they can eat, they... eat at this stage. Yeah, true. They can feed immediately. Some will try to first take water. Yeah. And that's good. Mm. They're all set. So these chicks are pre-vaccinated. Mm. Yes. So it means all you need to concentrate on is uh, feeding, feeding them, feeding. warmth, and you're good to go. Brian, I wanted to ask you, in case James has a problem and needs help, where can he go? Ken Chick offers a free check-in support. So free free. our vets are on call. They'll come and visit you, and they'll support you free. So feel free to reach out to us and then we'll support you. Because Ken Chick moves the farming journey with you. I want to thank Ken, Ken Chick yes. for this opportunity he has given us. Because I know you are going to help us move ahead. No, ah, yes, that's nice. what we want. Unfortunately, yes. we have to leave, but we wish you all the best in this uh, new venture. 
it, it has been a wonderful stay with you. Yes. And I promise that, that, that we, sh we shall be together in this journey. And thank you for and having please, us. Please always come. Please always come. Please always come. No, your coming was a blessing to us, as I mentioned. And no, nobody in his right senses would, would send away blessing. So you, you, you have actually taught us how to fish. We don't need to be given a fish because already taught us we can go and get it from ourselves. Yes. As for you people at home, we'll see you on the next episode of Shamba Shepa of Uganda.